Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Ari Views back with another video. iOS 17.2 has just been released and it brings a ton of new features and changes to iOS. Now with these new features and changes, there will also be new settings that you should change on your iPhone. So in this video, I will show you guys 20 settings that I believe you should change right away once you have updated your device to the new iOS 17.2. And we're starting with something new that Apple has added to iOS 17. It is called inline predictions. Basically, you will get the predictions in line when you're typing the text. And sometimes it's actually really annoying and will just type the wrong word or you will accidentally type a word. Well, now Apple with iOS 17.2 has added the option to actually disable it and you can do it from going to settings general and then under keyboard you will find here show predictions in line and now you can turn that off. Now if you don't see that option on your device what I need you to do is just head on here to enable dictation if you have it enabled make sure you disable it and re-enable it again and then it should show the inline predictions options right there. Moving on into the iCloud settings, so head on to your Apple ID at the top of your settings app, go into the iCloud section and then tap on show all and you will find something new here called the messages in cloud. Now this allows you to store your messages in iCloud. So if you lose your phone or you have, you're just transferring to another new phone or things like that, you will still have all your messages saved on the cloud. Now you can use your phone of course as the phone from where the messages will be saved by enabling it right here so if you have multiple devices you can choose any one of them that you want to use to actually back up your messages and store them securely on iCloud. And finally after so many years Apple is allowing us to change the default notification sound of the iPhone and you can do that by going to sounds and haptics right here you will find default alerts then we have the rebound one which is the new sound of iOS 17 the tritone right here that's the old one from iOS 16. Now you can change to any of these tones right here you can also choose the classic ones and just select any one of them that you want. Now what's really cool is that you can also set custom notification tones i will show you guys how to do that on the next video so make sure you subscribe for that under the same page you can also change the vibration setting so you go under haptics here you will have the default one of course and you have a few other ones that are preset right here on ios and you can just pick any one of them as your vibration for your notifications now if you want to change that to a custom vibration you can do that simply by tapping create a new vibration here all you have to do is tap and hold here to vibrate tap on the stop and then just save the vibration and of course you can select it from the custom list right here or if you just want to completely disable the vibration for your notifications you can just select none right here now here's another really important setting that you need to change on iOS 17.2 and that is if you use Apple Music. Now if you use Apple Music you know that once you favor a song it will add it to your library. Basically these songs will be saved on your iPhone. If you don't want that to happen, if you just don't want to have a ton of like favorite songs saved locally on your library, you can now just go to your settings, go under the music section and if you have Apple Music, if you use it, you will get this section right here called library. You can just switch off add favorite songs. Apple has added a cool new feature to live activities with iOS 17.2 and it's basically for live coverages. So if you're following an event on Apple News app, you can now turn on live activities and it will basically show you on the screen, on the lock screen, will show you live activities and keep you updated with the coverage of that news. So it's really cool if you don't have the live activities enabled for your Apple News app, go ahead and enable it and you will be able to get live coverage directly on your lock screen. And the long awaited contact key verification feature has finally made it to iOS with iOS 17.2. You can find this feature by going to your Apple ID at the top of your settings app. Just scroll all the way down just underneath the list of your devices. You will find contact key verification. You can use it of course for iMessage and you can just basically verify that the person you're texting to is the person you actually want to text to of course by using verification on iMessage. You can turn it on right here by default it will be switched off. 
If you use the books app on iOS to read books, you can now have a very nice touch on the books by simply enabling this setting right here, automatically invert images. You know that when you have your books on the dark mode, you will have of course a black screen here, which is way softer on the eyes. It's much better to read that way. There might be some bright images on that book and they will of course have a huge contrast with the background of the book. Now what you can do is enable this setting right here, which will automatically invert those images to fit better with the look of the dark mode. If you use switch control on your iOS device, you will now have some new options. So head on to your settings, go under accessibility, then you will have switch control and you will have switch control mode. If you go here, you will have now three different options. You can choose the item mode, you can choose the gliding cursor or head tracking to control basically your device and you will see also an explanation here for each of the different modes that you can select. With iOS 17.2, Apple has added some features for the Apple Pro Vision. So you can now go to general here and under AirPlay and handoff, you will find AirPlay receiver. Basically, you're turning your iPhone into an AirPlay receiver for your Apple Vision Pro headset. But of course, those are not on sale yet. Most people won't have those. So I would suggest that you go ahead and turn this off from the settings of AirPlay and handoff. For iPhone 15 Pro users, Apple has also added the ability to shoot spatial videos for the Apple Vision Pro. So you go to settings under camera here and then you go to formats and there you have it, special video for Apple Vision Pro. Now this will shoot at 1080p, 30 frames per second, but the video will be at around 130 megabytes. Most people don't need this feature to be enabled on their device. So make sure you go ahead and turn that off. Now with those 130 megabytes per second, you can shoot 4K videos for your iPhone. So of course, with this enabled, you're not just shooting the video for you're not shooting spatial video if you don't enable it from the camera app as well. But just in case you do that by accident, you will shoot a video that won't look that good on your iPhone, yet it will take a ton of space. So if you're not planning to buy the Vision Pro, don't enable this feature. And with iOS 17.2, Apple has also added the journal app to iOS. Now, what I suggest you do if you're planning to use this app on your device is that you lock it. You can go to your settings, go under general, and then you can enable the lock right here. So you'll lock your journal app with a passcode, face ID, or touch ID. So it's protected. And of course, no one can have access to the app. You can also choose when to require the passcode from immediately up to 15 minutes. Now, this is a great feature to have. Hopefully in the near future, we will have this feature for other apps as well. With iOS 17.2, Apple has added another emergency alert option called local awareness. Now you can find it by going to your notifications under the settings app, and then just scroll down to the emergency alerts and there you have it, local awareness. I suggest that you keep this enabled. Now what this does, it basically uses your approximate location to improve the timelines and also the accuracy of the alerts that Apple will send to your device. Now by going to the privacy and security settings of your iOS 17.2 device and then under analytics and improvements here, you will find a new option that Apple has added with iOS 17.2 and it's called improve AR location accuracy. I suggest you turn this off. This will of course have a bit of impact on the battery life of your device and also on the processor because it's working in the background to send data to Apple. So I don't think you need to have this enabled. So make sure you switch it off. With iOS 17.2, Apple has added also a new option for the Apple Watch. So if you own an Apple Watch, you will find this setting by going to your Apple Watch app and then go under workout. Now it's really annoying since updating to watchOS 10 every time I try to end a workout, it will require me a confirmation to do that. So now you can switch that confirmation off simply by going here and they have end workout confirmation, simply turn that off. Now those are 15 all new settings that Apple has added to iOS 17.2, but there are five more that I suggest you should check out on your device that are really important. And one of them will be clean up automatically under verification codes for the password options. Now what this will do for you is that all the confirmation, basically verification codes that you get with your email or iMessage, once you have used them, they will be automatically deleted from your iPhone.
Also, if you're not using name drop all the time on your device, I would suggest that you turn it completely off. Head on to your settings under general airdrop and they will have star sharing by bringing devices together. You can just switch that off so you no longer will have that feature and no longer will have those animations in your iPhone trying to share something whenever your iPhone is close to another. Under the standby mode, if you go to display here, you will find something called motion to wake. Now, what this does when you're using the standby mode is that it will always be trying to like scan the environment for any motion and wake up the screen of your iPhone. So I don't think you need that feature to be enabled because while you have your iPhone on the standby mode and it's charging and you have that feature turned on, it will of course consume battery on your iPhone that way make your iPhone charge way slower. Another thing I suggest you do when you have your iPhone on the standby mode, disable notifications. And you can do that by going to settings. Under the standby settings, you will have here show notifications. So when you leave on your, your iPhone on the standby mode, we know that it has to be docked basically standing like on a stand or on a charge or something like that. You might have it on your, your, on your table, just standing there on the standby mode charging. You might leave and you get the notifications and they will show up on the screen. You don't want that to happen because there might be someone there that you don't want to see your notifications. So make sure you have this switched off as well. And last but not least, if you have an iPhone 15, I suggest that you do this. Head on to your settings and then go under the battery settings, battery health and charging. And right here we'll have charging optimization. I would suggest that you actually use the 80% limit, especially on newer devices. It will help the battery of your device stay in great shape. It will have the battery lasting way more than probably other devices that will always charge to 100%. What this does, again, it will only charge your iPhone at 80%. It won't ever charge above 80%, that way keeping the battery healthier than before. So that's basically it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe for more iOS 17.2 videos, and I'll see you on the next one.